But no, death row essentially is uh, you're in a cell, mm -hmm. locked up 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he showers every what day or two or every, you know however many. But you just you in your cell mm -hmm. all day. You get a, probably an hour of recreation every you know couple of days where you go out and uh, you in a cage or whatever working out or mm -hmm. you could you know shoot some hoops. Um, but yeah, like you you're not in general population at all. So you're technically in uh, seclusion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 24 hours a day lockdown. It's you your cell. Um, your, your little cot, you know, you got a TV in there. You know, I just it's not like I've ever seen it, but just based off what he's yeah. explaining to me. Mm -hmm. So he's locked up, you know, they bring him all of his meals and you know, pretty much the only time you get to go out is to shower, to wreck, and then when somebody drive up and visit him. So he up in San Quentin, which is like, you know, one of the, wow, the most, yeah, one of like the most notorious um, prisons. But honestly, I think out of all the cases on death row, which is like 700 plus, mm -hmm. he probably has like, the weakest like case to where like like we about to get some bread and we about to figure this out because he mm -hmm. has the weakest case on death row as far as like a conviction yeah, you feel yeah, me yeah. yo what's up everybody welcome back to share i got a dude with me that man yeah. i'm inspired inspired by uh, i heard a little bit of his summary but you guys are gonna love it i'm glad to have you with me carl appreciate it for having me appreciate uh it. i love this dude and i love your story because again like i was telling you before you know, I didn't have the greatest childhood, but as I look back on it, man, I had everything in the world. Yeah. Never missed a meal, you know, lived in a great house, lived in a great community with great support system, teachers, counselors, um, but not everybody's awarded that, you know, and so right. a, a lot of a lot of my passion, a lot of my hard work come from not wanting to waste the talent, you know what I'm saying? You know mm -hmm. when you got an athlete that's dope and, they, and they're just hard, lazy, you know what I'm saying? They're wasting their Terrible. talent. That's how I feel in my life. I can't waste what I've, I've been given. Mm -hmm. But there's people like you who haven't gotten, and or who weren't given the same opportunities that like I was initially. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm inspired by your story. Just to, just to start us off, give us a little summary of your story and then we'll dive into the whole and, and, and kind of break the whole thing down. Uh, okay, so uh, started off kind of, you know, crazy up and down, whatnot. Uh, so my dad, I was born in August of 93. Um, my when, when was your birthday? Like August thirteenth. Oh, you got a Virgo. Okay. <laughs> no, nah, I believe. I was thinking about that yesterday. So like, Let me ask you what is what is because uh, again, when people start thinking like me, and I see like some, we right there though. Yeah, we, you, you know, right there. I'm like, Virgos, I'm, right I'm, there. I'm about to ask you. But go ahead. Yeah. Um. So, uh, my mom, she, you know, she raised me single parent. My pops, he was in jail like pretty much since I was born. So I was born in August of '93. My pops went to jail in December of '93. Mm. Um. So I kind of, I grew up with my mom mostly, um, but at the same time she was in and out of prison and um, I had to live with different people. Luckily I was blessed enough to not um, reach the foster care system because you know, me working in there now, working with those kids, I kind of see what it does to them. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's tough, man, it's a struggle. So um, living with different family members and uh, family friends, um, you know, went to high school, uh, started off, my freshman year was kind of cool, and then I, I moved from Fontana back to Pasadena, and that's when I kind of got in the mix of, of doing some things I shouldn't have been mm -hmm. doing. Um, luckily enough to meet a couple of, you know, people that inspired me and helped me and wanted to change who I was, um, and end up getting a scholarship to ASU and, you know, um, graduating from college and, you know, mm -hmm. doing things like that. So, um, it's, it's a long story, it's crazy, it's yeah. a journey, you know, but it, it made me who mm -hmm. I am today, you know what I'm saying, the same as you know, your story made you who you are today. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, how you want to take advantage of your mm -hmm. situation, so. So let's start from back. So you so you were born and you were raised in Fontana originally? No, born and raised in Pasadena. Okay. I moved to Fontana for high school. So oh, and that's when things started going better, when you moved to Fontana? Yeah, when I moved to Fontana. Okay. So my mom went to prison um, and I moved with my uncle, Derek. Um, he, w he played in the NFL and he moved back to uh, California once he was done playing. And then I, I spent a year, about a year and a half in Fontana, but mostly um, in Pasadena. I lived a different couple, I live, I live like everywhere, bro. So like, I'm from, born and raised in Pasadena. So that's the city I claim, but I done lived in LA, I done lived mm -hmm. in Inglewood, I done lived in Carson with my, I done lived a bunch of different places, you know? Yeah. But born and raised in Pasadena, so. What do you think that does to you? Moving around, being, cause, cause bro, I was born Chino Hills, California, born, raised, went to elementary, <laughs> junior mm -hmm. high, high school, all same people, all yeah. same school. 
What does it do to you to move around so many different places and being confused, having to meet new friends, new people? How does that? When I was younger, I didn't understand it. Um, like, man, it kind of sucks because you would meet somebody and, you know, that person would be really cool and then boom, I'm taken away and I'm going mm -hmm. somewhere and it's something I, ha I had no control over, you yeah. know, especially being a kid. Like, you got to do what you got to do. Like, you know, yeah. you got to, whatever the authority, whoever my authority figure is, whatever they say goes. So, um, it was kind of tough, but I think nowadays um, it made me adaptable. So, like, I can go, like, you could put me anywhere, I feel like. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a win. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You could put me with any crowd, any, I like, just naturally, genuinely, my personality, I feel like I'm a likable guy. Not everybody likes me, of course. That would be blasphemy to think that, but. Um, you just put me anywhere. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a blend in. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, I, and I, I, I like to call myself a chameleon there as well because, again, I grew up with number white folks. You okay. know, and so I had the to be able to adapt in a bunch of different environments because my family out here, my family from the hood too, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I dealt with the uh, going to the hood and you white and you talking white. And so <laughs> so, I, so I've white. adapted that way as well. But um, that's one thing I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not good at, but I wish I was better at. Nah, I'm good at it. But when I want to say meeting new people. Like, you know, meeting yeah. new people naturally, for me, I'm always standoffish at first. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like I'm observing you, like yeah. I'm not familiar with Trying you. You know what I'm saying? Out. Yeah, you know, and then after that, we good. We talk forever. But at first, I'm always standoffish. And, and there's a lot of things that, that I, like I said, I was so privileged in a lot of ways mm -hmm. that I wish I wasn't privileged in some ways because I knew it would benefit me on the back end. Like yeah. you saying, like you're able to be everywhere, whenever. So you say your mom's in and out of jail. Mm -hmm. um, why, what was she doing? Why was she in and out of jail? What was going on? Uh, it's a couple of you know situations to why she was in and out of jail. Mainly to summarize it, I mean she was a single mom with four kids and mm -hmm. she was just trying to provide. Like we had no like my two younger siblings, their fathers were, were in their life like periodically, um, but like for me and my older brother, it was like we ain't had no pops. You mm -hmm. feel me? My pops on death row and. Uh, my, bro my older brother Pops, he was around, but he wasn't involved, you feel me? And mm -hmm. I, I think that's kind of worse, because, like, with my Pops, like, he in jail. I know there's nothing he can do, but if you're a man and you're around, yeah, and you, you know your son yeah. is, like, 20 minutes away, 15 minutes away, or you at the parking, your son at the parking, you, I think that's kind of worse. Yeah. So, while my situation may seem, on the outside looking in, crazy, I kind of took the cards I was dealt and I um, made the best of that situation. Yeah. And, and I always thought positive. Um, I never really kind of thought negative. I always was a positive thinker, like what is the best that can come out of this situation? Yeah. And I think that's what, what benefited me. But now my mom, she went to jail, I think about, I think three or four times. So she had three or four time felon or, you know, whatever the case may be. But she was just honestly just trying to provide. She's a great woman. She's a hard worker. You know what I'm saying? She's my inspiration. And when I was younger, I really didn't, Understand? I'm like, damn, mom. Like, why you keep leaving? Yeah, us? that was you, gonna ask you. you know, like, like, like at that time, was you understanding what was going on? Was you like so kind of uh, like half and half? Like, I kind of understood what was going on when I was real young. No, I didn't understand. But as I got older, um, I kind of understood because when she was there and she was able to provide for the most part, um, we were good. Like, we we didn't have nothing super crazy, but. You know, me and my brother were taken care of. We were well dressed. We had the J's. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We went to Slauson and got everything new. Like we, we were, we were, the, we were cool. Like we were straight. But yeah. it was sometimes you go from like the loving nurture of your mom, and then you got to go live with somebody else. And I'm not buying you a pair of Jordans yeah. all the time. Yeah. Are you about to get these these Shell <laughs> Toe Adidas? Are you about to get these Chucks? You know what I'm saying? So um, while my mom did a wonderful job of taking care of us, I also got, you know, the best. I got the best and the worst of both worlds. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so you never had no resentment or, like, misunderstanding, like, mom, why are you doing this? Is like, I, you, I did. You understood that she I, was trying to? Yeah, I had some anger towards her, especially when I was older, because as you get older and you kind of start to understand things and you become more wise. Um, so... Like I told you earlier, I live with my uncle in Fontana my freshman year and part of my sophomore year. My mom got out of jail and she, she lived in Pasadena. So I left my uncle's and I went back to my mom's and uh, we used to kind of, we used to kind of get into it. And my whole thing was like, well, like, what can you really tell me? You left me. Yeah, like, not yeah. once, not mm -hmm. twice. You know what I'm saying? More than two times. Like you went to jail and like, you kind of left me with somebody. Ain't no telling what could happen to me. Luckily yeah. nothing didn't, but I hear stories all the time where kids get abused, they get raped. Like, Real like this is stuff that's happening every day. So luckily, I was blessed enough to not go through anything traumatic like mm -hmm. that. But 
Um, now that I'm older, I kind of see it for what it was. And I ask her questions and she keep it 100 with me. She'll tell you I did this because of this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But she was she was a hustler. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, she went to jail, but she was a hustler. Like, my mom is the first person I've seen count $50,000 in cash on the bed. You know what I'm saying? I've never seen that much money. And I respect my mom for that. So Yeah. Um, no, if I ask because even my parents, you know, like I said, my parents are from the hood too. So I, when I look at them... And they've done, there's some negative things that they've done in their life yeah. that I've seen, you know, with mm-hmm. my own eyes. And again, I lived a beautiful life and there's a lot of things I, I, I don't want to say despise them, but I, I didn't respect them for as mm-hmm. I was growing up. But then now as I look back as a man and now that I'm about to be going through some of the same thing, I'm like, I understand why you did that. Yes. Like that makes sense to me. Like yes. I don't, I don't view it no more like that. So I'm glad that you're able to come, come that way. Yeah. What as an overall effect do you think that? moving to different houses like and i'm asking you this question because a lot of people don't understand um they 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 say they understand the effects that this can have on a child but the people a lot of people don't really understand how much it can affect a child especially you talking about your brother when you're saying that his dad is across the street now he's thinking like man like am i not good enough am i not worth it how much of an effect does it have on your confidence or your mental stability and stuff like that nature well i think like like for for example not to cut you off um you being around other kids, like yeah. you know, you seeing them with both their parents and things is going good. Like, were you looking at them like I'm not as good as you or I'm less than? Like, how did that make you feel? And that's crazy that you say that because right before you cut me off, that's what I was okay. about to hint at. My biggest thing was playing sports. So you got to look at it like this: I played sports, played football, played baseball, played basketball, ran track. Um, so when I would go to these sp- different sporting events, for the most part. Uh, you will see at least somebody, one of their parents there. Either, you know, sometimes you'll get both, luckily. Mm-hmm. But then, like, maybe the dad is there, mom got to work, or mom is there, dad got to work, or it's just mom. Yeah. At, at a point in time, it was nobody for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember playing in high school when I was a sophomore, and nobody was at my game. Like, I went I went bananas. Like, five touchdowns yeah. in one game, and, like... <laughs> I, I like my friend's mom is giving me a ride home like mm. Carl you did a good job today like I don't got that real like celebrating it with them is cool but it's different like mm. when you're celebrating it with your family mm. so um it was it was hard as a kid as a kid it was really hard but as I grew I grew older I kind of I kind of like shook it because like like you said people say they understand but they're not gonna say hey you grew up you know without your parents in your life or your mom in and out of your life and your dad not in your life completely like it go twenty thousand dollars. It go fifty thousand. Like it's no handouts for yeah, that. You no. gotta go get it the yeah, same yeah. way anybody else gotta get it. So mm-hmm. once I understood that, I said, you know what? You know, you you use it for a chip on your shoulder, mm-hmm. but you don't carry it as dead weight because at the end of the day, it's only gonna affect me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and like I said, Brandon, and this is this is why I'm passionate about this stuff because again, I got two degrees. I got my real estate license. I've accomplished so many things mm-hmm. this far in my life. And a lot of people are like, man, Nate, you're doing so good. Yeah. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I hate that because, yeah. again, you know, we look at it, and, and again, I went to school in Montana. I went to school in Chino Hill. So I hear the rhetoric that they talk about people in the inner city and about how lazy people are. And, and, and I'm like, we can't look at somebody who's 22 with no degree, no high school diploma, none of that. Yeah. And it's like, bro, nobody taught them how to do this. Yeah. You know, because as I started mentoring kids, I was mentoring kids in Linwood, right up yeah. there by Compton, bro. Mm-hmm. They, they don't have counselors, bro. When I was in eighth grade, I had a counselor tell me every single class I needed to take be, for me to be uh, NCAA eligible for the okay. clearinghouse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every single class, freshman yeah. year, sophomore year, in high school, right? Yeah. They, they're like, I don't even know what the clearinghouse is. Yeah. I don't know what the SAT is, right. you know? So I can't look at somebody like that and, and look down upon you or say that yeah. you're not good enough, you know, yeah. when you're just a kid who just didn't have the right direction. Also, with that being said, Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody really gives a damn. <laughs> nobody you know? cares. That's and, fast. You know, like, and, and I, I can pat you on the back, <laughs> like, man, I know it's hard. But nobody, like you said, no one cares. No one's going to give you a handout. So my thing is I just want to, you know, inspire them to be like, look, you important to me still. Like, yeah. you, you, you still have that. I, whatever information I can give to you to help you. But yeah, at the end of the day, nobody gives a damn. Nobody gives a damn. But that's great. That's great. Um, let's talk about your pops, though. Okay. So my pops, he went to jail at... I think he was about 18 or 19. No, he went to jail at 18 because he said he did. He was in jail for his 19th birthday, so he's 45 or old. He is 47. So you've been in jail your whole entire he's life. He's been in jail my whole entire life. Um, How's you guys' relationship? We got a great relationship, man. We communicate all the time. It kind of started off rocky, but like right now, today, like it's solid. Like you know, mm-hmm. we holler at each other. It's cool. Um, mostly for the most part, it was like 
you left me and my mom. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? As men, we're looked at as providers. You know what I'm saying? For the most part. And it was like, damn, like, you left me and my mom. And he took care, before he went to jail, he took care of my older brother, who was it, who's not yeah, his kid. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Dude. So you kind of left, you left us, but he, all in all, he was a good, a good dude. But like, like I said, he's been in jail since he was 19 and he was young. You know what I'm saying? My grandma had died, which is his mom, and my grandpa was working. And, you know, he got a kind of a crazy story of his own on, you know, what led him to get to where he's at and, you know, his life now and what he does. But, um, no, we got a, we got a cool relationship, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. I honestly 100, 1,000% believe he's innocent based on what he's in jail for. Really? He's in jail for a triple murder. But even as I was growing up, Everybody would tell me like, "Yo, pops mm-hmm. didn't do that. Mm-hmm. He just won't snitch." Like, and you know how that how the how the code got, is in the hood. I got people, man. I got I got family members who was in there for eighteen just because of that. Just because of that, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, at the end of the day, I respect him for who he is and what he stands for. Um, as a man, you know, he's in a situation, but he not he don't hold his head down. He yeah. he more like, okay, I'm in this situation, but I'm about to get out of it because. There's no physical evidence on me. There's no murder weapon. There's no footprints. There's no fingerprint. There's nothing on me. The only thing that they say is that somebody saw him from 100 yards away at 10 p.m. at night. And my, my father, he's not as dark as I am complexion, but he's yeah. a, he's probably your color. Yeah. And if you stand on the goal line, we play football. You yeah, stand on the goal line. <laughs> I stand on the goal line at 10 p.m. at night. I'm not going to be able to tell who you are. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 100 yards away, which yeah. is insane. So literally... That's the only thing that got him um, convicted. Um, it was like a, it was a big case, man, in Pasadena. It was, it was a lot, like a really, really high profile case. It's a lot of factors that go into that. Like we can go into that another time, yeah. but um, honestly, I, I, I'm one thousand percent sure. And uh, even my mom told me that my pops, he in jail for something that he didn't do. You know really? what I'm saying? So I was gonna ask you about that, like if you thought, you know, but that's crazy. Yeah. Man. So uh, coming up, you know. Um, you hear different stories about, you know, the situation, but most of the of the really true, genuine people I met, because my mom's really ain't talked to me about it growing up, and my pops really ain't talked to me about it until about two years ago when I went to go see him. I don't know. I don't. I don't know why they really kept. I don't want to say they kept it away, but they kind of just waited till I was old enough to really, really understand yeah, and mature. Me, my, dad, my dad revealed so many things to me, <laughs> yeah. bro. Like, so I'm oh, like, so, on that? <laughs> okay, so now, <laughs> now I'm starting to understand a little bit more, but nah, uh, great dude, man. Really, really great dude. And, you know, hopefully, you know, with the time the time being, he, he going to get his, his day to come out and tell his story. And, you know, everything with like, I, it's crazy because, you know, we... You saw that uh, when they see us. Yeah, the so, so. I'm into all this law enforcement stuff. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm deep into it. I know my rights, the Constitution. Like, yes. So when you explaining that stuff, I know exactly what you mean. And I know how they set it up. They just needed that conviction. They needed somebody to, to, yeah. to point them out. And that's all they needed. That's Other all they that, needed. You know. So, but when, you, when I'm explaining that story to my peers in college, which mm-hmm. are mainly white, they're like, well, how does that even happen? Like, they, like they can't, they can't they, comprehend they, they, they that can't come and, happen. You know what I'm saying? So like, unless you go through it, it's kind of like I don't even like, like when people ask me, like, are you afraid to talk about it? Like, no, like it's on TV. Like you can go to YouTube and type in Gangland. There's a whole episode oh, okay. on, my, on my, well, not a whole episode on my pops, but they talking about the Bloods in the LA area, mm-hmm. and it, it's a, it's a, it's probably a two part feature on my pops in the situation and how it went down and. How it looks on the outside looking in, but it don't really get into the details of it. It just tell about, you know, right. it happened on Halloween, so it's called the Halloween Massacre. So it was, it's a big deal. It was a big deal in Pasadena. And, you know, we got the Rose Parade, the Rose Bowl game. Mm-hmm. So people were scared. Like, you just had this murder going yeah. on, and we got to come out here for the Rose Bowl and the Rose Parade, which is a really big deal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're scared. Especially back then, probably was a little bigger, too. You know, wasn't that. you know what I'm saying? Like, we're scared. Like, somebody got to go. Same thing with the Central Park yeah. Five. Like, this lady just got raped in Central Park and, and you know, assaulted and almost murdered. Like, somebody got to go to jail for this go, so yeah. the community could feel safe. Because when the community is up and roared, it ain't yeah. nothing nobody could do. So, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. Man, I'm glad, man. You special, bro, because... Like, you're really special because I think it takes a lot. It really takes a lot for you to really be able to look at your pops. Like, mm-hmm. I respect you, I understand. Like, take out the emotional baggage of the yeah. situation and be like, all right, here's the situation, here are the facts of the situation. Um, 
and not let that really affect your life. Like, you know, not not saying it's not affected your life, but in a way where you're resenting your pops or you're looking at him like, shoot, I don't know if he really did do this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you really step back. A lot of people, like, they, they don't even want to deal with their pops in yeah. that situation. And, they, and they're so emotional that they can't look at look through the nonsense. Mm -hmm. But that's crazy, man. That's that's a, that's a crazy yeah, story, man. man. It's, it's, it's dope. It's super deep. Death Row. He's yeah. on Death Row. Expl death Row, man. Explain to us, because a lot of people probably really don't know what Death Row is. They hear it. They think, you know, explain to us what Death Row is and uh, for people who probably don't know what it is. <laughs> It's not, it's not Suge's Death Row <laughs> or Pocket Snoop, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but no, Death Row essentially is uh, you're in a cell, mm -hmm. locked up 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he showers every, what, day or two or, every, you know, however many. But you just, you in your cell mm -hmm. all day. You get a, probably an hour of recreation every, you know, couple of days where you go out and uh, you in a cage or whatever working out or mm -hmm. you could, you know, shoot some hoops. Um, but yeah, like you, you're not in general population at all. So you're technically in uh, seclusion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 24 hours a day lockdown. It's you, your cell, uh, your your little cot. You know, you got a TV in there. You know, I just not, it's not like I've ever seen it, but just based off what he's yeah. explaining to me. Mm -hmm. So he's locked up. You know, they bring him all of his meals, and you know, pretty much the only time you get to go out is to shower. To wreck, and then when somebody drive up and visit him, so he up in San Quentin, which is like you know one of the, Bro, the most yeah, one of like the most notorious um, prisons. But honestly, I think out of all the cases on death row, which is like seven hundred plus, mm -hmm. he probably has like the weakest like case to where like like we about to get some bread and we about to figure this out because he mm -hmm. has the weakest case on death row as far as like a conviction yeah, you feel yeah, me yeah. so we in the works of that we got some stuff going on to where we gonna we gonna help him out and he's strong and he like you know y'all y'all make some plays y'all get it together he ain't in no rush he's like i've been in here this whole time so he's been in death row since he got in since he got in he so, was sentenced to death row at 19. you really? know what i'm saying so so he's been in 23 hour confinement his whole since then since then man locked up does death he talk row. to you about um being in Sancer, um, like what that does to him mentally, have you seen any changes in him? Okay, so like when I was younger, I really didn't pay any attention to it, and, and, and I probably don't remember. That's probably due to the concussions I got yeah. in, in, in college. <laughs> but um, now, like he said, he used to really be angry, and I think it's funny because um, so my pops is a blood, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, or was a blood formerly, and um, when I first tried to first try to put him on Nipsey. Mm -hmm. and yeah. <laughs> I, hey, bro, I was about to ask you a lot about Nipsey. You know what I'm saying? Ask you a lot about we, we, could, we could dive in the neighborhood in there, but he's like, hey, listen to that. Like, crap. Like, and you know, just naturally being from the section that I'm from, it's like, you know, we don't, you don't really mess with the other side like that. But uh, I'm like, Pops, like, he, like, he hard. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, he a crip, but he hard. Yeah. Uh, so it took my pops a while, you know what I'm saying, still stuck in that mentality. And then he told me he started reading. And then, you know, he just started reading and reading and reading and reading and reading. And mind you, my pops, he ain't, he ain't graduated from high school. Yeah, so it's You know what I'm saying? Reading. So he learning, you know, how to read, learning, breaking down words. He got a dictionary in there, trying to learn the definitions of words. Like everything, basically, we learned in elementary. Yeah, he started he's, all, he started all reading. over, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, um... Uh, he reads, man. He's so like spiritually gifted. And my my cousin Darnay, who's a high profile player, he goes to UCLA. He started. He was like a five star in high school. Uh, like he gives Darnay a lot of game that Darnay takes and uses just daily. Just you know how to get your mind right, how to yeah. how to not move based off emotions, because a lot of people move based off emotions. And Our if you people. do, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, you can really put yourself in a bad situation. That's why nip boom. Yeah, for real. Emotions. Off emotion. So. My pops used to tell me, he used to be like, son, he used to, he used to tell me like this, like, ah, uh, I'll wait a little bit. That's what he say. When he want to kick some game and I resent the game he want to kick, he like, ah, uh, I'll wait a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, you ain't going to understand right now. Give me about two years, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So then <laughs> after, you know, I went through something and then boom, now he's explaining to me like, okay, son, that's why, you see why I say don't move off emotion? Mm -hmm. Because this can happen, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Or this can happen. So um, It's funny, though, that you say that because my pops married growing up. My pops was always giving me game, and I was somebody who listened to my pops because mm -hmm. 
He used to always tell me, listen to me, because I didn't listen to my pops. Okay. Like, he used to always tell yes. me that. I don't know why. And so I was like, forget it. Like, he would always just talk to me how people don't listen to their daddy. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to listen to you. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And everything he told me, I would not understand. Like, for an example, he used to tell me when I was like eight, the, you should be in politics because the politicians control the money. He used to always tell me that. But I didn't understand what the hell he meant yeah. about politicians. <laughs> like, but now I understand. Like, but, but things always happen. He, for another thing, he told me, when I left the college, bro, he told me, don't have sex on camera. I don't mm -hmm. know why. And I'm like, and you have all the things you can tell me to give me advice right now. You can tell me don't have sex on camera. <laughs> no, but I got camera. to school, bro, and, and dudes started getting in trouble about yeah. that shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it was like, okay, fine, yeah. I understand. Uh, but, um, okay, so 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 he wasn't on it, but he started reading Nip's, Nip's information, or he just he, started reading in general? He just started reading in general, and then he kind of started hearing Nip's message, mm -hmm. you know, because... When Nip first came out, he, you know, coming straight off of Sloss and yeah. crazy mother named <laughs> Nipsey turned up because I grew, like, yeah. so my pops was like, man, I ain't trying to hear, I'm from a whole nother section, you yeah. feel me? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't live on Sloss, I didn't grow up, I ain't from 60s, why well, I want to listen to that? So then as, you know, how as Nip transformed and, mm -hmm. and started leveling up, then my pops started diving in. So I like, I, I'm big on Nip, like, yeah. When Nip first started, like I was, I was, you know what I'm saying? I was on him. I had a neighbor named Devin who lived upstairs from me in the apartments that I lived in in like 08, 09. And he came downstairs, like, listen to this. And yeah. Keys to the City, you know what I'm saying, was was the first off the marathon tape. That's the first song that I heard. I'm like, oh, he hard. So yeah. then I started diving into him. So, uh, so as Nipsey started leveling up, my two, like, my two favorite rappers is Drake. Like, I, re yeah. I really like Drake. And, uh, I like Nipsey. So my pops, once Nipsey start, you know, going bananas after the Crenshaw and the mailbox yeah. money and he dropped the victory lap, like my pops would hit hit me and Darnay and be like, man, like, like we on the phone, he like, man, like nip over everybody. Yeah. You feel me? Like <laughs> nip turned into his favorite rapper within like two or three years. That's and he like, say. I'm from the streets, nip from the streets, and he mm -hmm. really seeing what he doing now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So he like, like I I, I really mess with Nip yeah. and like it was crazy. I remember telling my pops when he died, like, like he was like, like shook, like he was like, man, like how could somebody doing so, so good, like really just get got yeah, like that? You know spirit, what I'm saying? Bro. So it hurt me because like my experience with Nip, because I wasn't on Nip for a longer, so I'm mm -hmm. not about to sit here and act like, act like you was. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell you my experience with Nip and why I was so hurt was because. Like, you know, I heard all the all, all the, 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 the songs and the mixtapes from back in the day. Yeah. The Marathon Continued when I was brought up. And I was screaming that in high school. Yeah. You know, it's TMC. The yeah, Marathon. Yeah, yeah. And at first, I didn't even know why I was screaming it. But yeah. I, I resonated with the message immediately. Yeah. The Marathon Continued. Yeah, it's a long haul. Like, I had that mindset. Just of who I was. Mm -hmm. And so, but, but as time progressed, again, I wasn't really on music. I was on music in general. So, like, I wasn't really listening to Nipsey. Yeah. But it was... Like when I graduated okay. college and I heard that interview when he was talking about investing in real estate and all that stuff. Yeah. So I started watching Nipsey, not his music, but just listening to his interview. what he does. Yeah. So I'm hearing, I'm like, okay, this, this dude really, he's spitting some real shit. Yeah. So that's when I got onto Nipsey. So, but then when, when Victory Lap came out, that's when I'm like, oh, this nigga Nipsey is hard. He hard. Like he going ham. He so then hard. that's when I went back and I started listening to all of his music. Yeah. So when he died, bro, I was like in the midst of like, I just became a crazy fan of yeah, this dude. Just really I have respect for in. this dude. Like I see the way he, he's doing with Lauren London. Like this is like, this is the definition of an operation complete human to me. Like, yeah. dude, you killing it. Like, you giving back. You making your bread. You independent. You ownership. Like, everything that I wanted to be, Nipsey was doing. Was you know that. what I'm saying? And so, forget the music. Like, as a man, I was I was like, that's what I was on. Yeah. And then they kill my man. I'm like, yeah. there's no fucking way, yeah. bro. I couldn't believe yeah. it, man. Because, I'm going to tell you, it's crazy. My family, on my father's side, my aunt, she owns a restaurant in Carson, Eminem Soul Food. Um, and my grandpa... Said there more, there's a couple of those, huh? It's a couple of those, okay. but we on we on the, the one in Carson. Carson. Yeah, okay. it's one in Inglewood. It's you know it's a couple mm -hmm. around. But uh, so my grandpa said like Nip came in like two weeks before he got killed, mm -hmm. but he didn't know he didn't know who he was. He just saw him in a Puma tracksuit, and uh, he was my grandpa was like the whole time he was sitting there eating. It was it's like man, I want to tell. He was telling my uncle like man, I want to tell him like you know that tracksuit he got on is nice. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And my grandpa had a Proway tracksuit on, which is my uncle's training company. Uh, the pro way so they you know they train high school athletes so my grandpa had a, a pro way sweatsuit on or whatever and uh you know as nip walking out the door uh my grandpa stopping me like hey young blood like like that 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 uh that sweatsuit you got on this fire like i like that he like you like this og he like all right when i come back 
I'm gonna give you one, and that that suit you got on right there, I need you to have one for me. We gonna make an exchange. You know what I'm saying? And then my grandpa, like two weeks later, he look up on the news, and uh, he see that he like, man, ain't that the dude that you know? But my grandpa, he not in, he he never knew Nip was yeah, a rapper yeah, or nothing. Yeah. He didn't know. He just like, man, this dude got good energy. Wow. And he was like, I was wondering why all the employees, like the younger people, like my age, when he came they in, juice. they went outside, they was juice, but they got pictures with him. And he was like, he didn't know what he was, and then he found out he was a rapper. So. When my grandpa really seen what he done for the community, you know, with him being in Carson and, you know, where the, where the Crenshaw district ain't that far away. So he, yeah. see, he see that direct impact that he making on the community. And my grandpa was just like, man, I can't believe like I don't really think it's like, you know, everybody's going to die. But it's the way Nip died and yeah, how he died. died. And it's on camera and, for the and world the time, to like see. Like I said, he just hit his he, He's just hit his peak, his bro. His peak. It, it ain't like it ain't like he dropped five albums and yeah. like I'm I'm like, he ain't I'm like Jay Z right now, you know. Yeah. Bro, he hit his peak so and he was about to do damage, bro. Yeah. He had so, so much in front of him. And it's a marathon. You got to think he hit his peak at he hit his peak at 33. At 33. He hit his peak at 33. Started. Some people get to 25 and they look and say I ain't got this, I ain't got that, mm -hmm. and be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it took Nip 10 years from 08. To 2018 to drop the victory lap and he that's 10 years that's a that's long time first, and but, that's his first album and that's his first album and it was classic and, and, and Pac died at 25 you know I'm big on Pac too Pac yeah. died at 25 so you could just imagine well, just think if he would have got an extra 10 mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so yeah man it's definitely crazy but you know Nip Nip got that impact on all of us man and I, I went to, I was lucky enough to go to the funeral I went to the funeral um i drove around you know followed the body and all that and it was love like man every, i could drive across crenshaw i'm like every community it was love bro mm -hmm. bloods crips we had a couple of you know little areas that we drove in where they you know dudes was on some gang banging for, for like 98 percent of the uh procession is that what it's called the recession. The recep recep no procession i, I, I think it's procession yeah, whatever the word is <laughs> Uh, they didn't teach me that in college. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, uh, they didn't educate. <laughs> Lifetime <but>, education. Huh? <laughs> so yeah, but uh, yeah, we drove around and it was it was love. And when, when we got right to the to the to the store, it was it was like it was something I never seen before. And that's when I'm like, all right, it's my turn to dip out. I got out of line, like literally, like yeah. I'm like I got videos on my phone, like his daughter right next to me. You feel me? They mm -hmm. was in the roads. I'm just with my friends and my cousin. Yeah, like we, 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 no, we driving. Oh, we yeah, chilling. Yeah, we drive. We literally in it with them. You oh, know okay. what I'm saying? So behind like, the hearse, behind, stuff? Yeah. behind the hearse and stuff. So like, I told my friends like I wanted to do it, and they was kind of like, "Are you like, are you crazy?" I'm like, "Man, the whole this, the whole hood is about to do this. Yeah. Like, this is this is for LA. This is just bigger than Chris Charles yeah. mm -hmm. So like, after the body like turned out and you know they had the rolls royces and the all money is and all that the sprinters after they came out like i pulled out right behind them behind the last sprinter right okay. so i'm just you know driving probably like half a mile i look behind me i see dudes on dirt bikes i see dudes on low riders i see and i was like i told you i wasn't crazy yeah. the whole hood is coming out for nip because yeah. of what he did for the community so you yeah know, man, that, that's, that, special, that's big man, man. it's like, very real big that, that really hurt me man that's what i want to do however i can get back to the hood yeah. i always go over there man and just the spirit, man. Yeah, I, I mean, go over there, and the spirit's just like it's right around the corner. Yeah, like, man. Yeah, and he, I mean, at the end of the day, he his funeral was out here at Staples. Like Staples, like if you think about, like, don't get me wrong, Nipsey's impact here was tremendous. Yeah. But then, if you think about Michael Jackson, and his impact around the world was tremendous, and Michael Jackson was at Staples Center, and so was Nipsey's. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that just I let you know. Different. On what type of impact? The show was God sent. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I truly believe that. I believe that know, too. That what he's talking about, and to see the problem now is we got to get people to buy because people are they going for a year be like, oh, let's be on this Nipsey, let's yeah. get back to the community, let's yeah. let's come together, unity, love, peace. Like yeah. everybody gonna be honest, but they ain't gonna forget about it in a year. Yeah. You know how they. You know how they. Do. They gonna forget about it in a year. You know how they but do. okay, so let's.